Unsolved Mysteries. Tonight's Unsolved Mystery deals with the saving of life rather than the loss of it. It is one of these true happenings which accounts for the fact that sailors, no matter what nationality, are vastly more superstitious than landlubbers. And when one considers the extraordinary happening aboard the Lure Lane, who can be so bold as to blame them? aboard the liner Lauritania. Heavy seas and raging gales have buffeted the ocean greyhound since she left Portsmouth. And now, eight hours late, she is still 17 hours sail out of New York. Driving sleet whirls along the decks. The dismal blasts of the siren cut through the fog. But below, Captain Morris, in order to offset the disappointment of the passengers at not landing in time for Christmas Eve dinner, has ordered the salon decorated and an appropriate dinner served. Dinner is over, and the captain... Genial, a trifle portly, but every inch the captain, is entertaining a select group, including the ship's senior officers, at the much-envied captain's table. <laughs> well, I think you've done splendidly, Captain Morris. Why, the salon looks as though you've been preparing for Christmas festivities for months. Thank you, Miss Van Burrow. But most of the credit belongs to my very able first officer. He is the genius who discovered that palm leaves and a pair of scissors can be used to turn out a very presentable synthetic holly. And the holly berries? Mac, the chief engineer, thought of that. Red beans from a shipment out of Yokohama. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, for one, am not disappointed at not landing. I'm enjoying myself immensely. Yes, I noticed that you are. And I should think my first officer is, too. Oh, now you're teasing. Tell me, though, Captain. In spite of all the festivities, aren't you nervous away from the bridge? No, oh, not a bit of it. I have a very capable officer on watch. And with wireless and everything. But the Titanic had wireless, too, Captain. Quite true. But not a while with compass, not radio beacon, and not Captain Morris's guardian in the unseen world. Now, Mac. Wheel, it's Christmas Eve. It's a true story, and the captain tells us about a wheel indeed. Please tell us, Captain Morris. Well, I want you to understand something, all of you. Mac here was chief on the low lane when this happened. Mr. Johnson, the first officer, was second officer of the low lane, and Sam Benson, our present chief wireless operator, was also operator on the same ship. And it was a night pretty much like this. Howling gale, mountainous seas. Johnson's hands were numbed from hanging onto the siren cord. The crew was well nigh exhausted from standing double watches, and Sam Benson and his assistant Tommy were in the stuffy little wireless cabin. Oh, what a night this is. Yes, almost any minute. I expect a wireless cabin to be blown clear off the deck. Maybe I'd better get out there and loosen that rat tail. That line will get so tight we'll have the antenna crashing down on the deck. I loosened it about an hour ago. It ought to be all right. The Aquapania. About a hundred miles out of New York. How would you like to be the chief wireless aboard that floating pallet? A night like this, I feel a fellow's a fool to ship on any kind of a boat. Well, we're not as bad off as poor Mac down there in the engine room. 
Every time they roll, the water all but touches the fire bars. And I suppose the siren's using all his steam. The old man still on the bridge? Yeah. He hasn't left except for a cup of coffee for two days now. First mate's still up there, too, I Yes, suppose. they're both standing there hanging onto the rail and getting their faces cut to ribbons with that fleet. Why don't you take off the earphones and throw the set onto that new speaker I built? On a night like this, I'm afraid to. Anything might happen. Some poor devil will smash into an iceberg and we wouldn't be able to pick him up. You worry too much. That speaker will give you everything you can get on those old phones. Get a weak signal and try it. All right. See that? What did I tell you? A pretty nice job, all right. Sure, your ears won't be ready to drop off from carrying those phones for eight hours of a stretch. You better turn in and get some sleep. Another day of this and I won't be able to keep my eyes open, even if the blooming ship goes down. All right. See you in the morning if you're still around. Listen. Listen. Am I crazy? Derelict on your port bow. Oh, well, that's what it said. Hang on. I'm going to the bridge. Well, it's for you, Skipper. Derelict on your port bow. What's that, Bud? Derelict on your port bow. Throw the wheel over. Hard to starboard. Take it close, sir. Hold feet to sign. There it is. Well, right on it. Lay on the wheel. Lay on the wheel. Get the carpenter below. He must tell me. He must have ripped half the bottom out of it. Oh, hands from our station! Right, Captain S.O.S., sir. Wait for the carpenter's report. Yes, sir. What's the name of all creation, Captain? Derelict, man. I thought he'd run aground. I put him near the engine out of his bed flex. He's all right, though. I sure do. Oh, we just might as well go below to that inferno of mine again. Man alive. Of all the engine rooms I've been in, that one is one of the worst. Ah, you can thank your lucky stars for that wireless message. Well, if you'd be on your way to the bottom instead of the engine room. What wireless message? Well, it's warning us about that derelict. If we hadn't received that, we'd have plowed squares back into her. Wireless? Wireless? Yes, what's wrong with you, man? There's nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? How could you get a wireless message warning you about a derelict? What what was that message exactly, Sparks? A derelict on your port bow. How could any other ship tell you that you had a derelict on your port bow? Good Lord, you're right, Mac. I never thought of that in the emergency. How could any ship? Unless there was just a few feet from you, as close to the derelict as you were. All right, Mac. What ship sent that message, Fox? She didn't give any name, sir, or call letters. But maybe you know the operator. His name is Watson. Watson? Watson, you say? Yes, no mistake about it. It's Watson. Why, sir? What's wrong, sir? You're looking white, sir. You... Watson? Watson was my operator on the Acosta. He was washed overboard and drowned a year ago tonight. Two of us, Miss Van Burrough. I never have known what to think. Could your wireless operator not have been mistaken? Ooh, one might, but not two. Remember, both of them read the message. And what if they were both mistaken? That does not do away with the fact that all of our lives were saved by the warning that we were bearing down on a derelict. There was no way in the world that any other ship could have known of the position of that derelict. And no other Watson could have sent that message? No, Miss Van Burrough. No other Watson. Have you no explanation, Captain? Yes, I have an explanation. But whether or not it will satisfy you is another question. Well, any sort of explanation of an affair like that would be welcome. After you've heard from your sponsor, you will hear the captain's explanation of the wireless mystery.
ladies and gentlemen, the solution for which you have been waiting. In attempting an explanation of a thing like this, you must make certain concessions. Such as, Captain? Well, that Watson, for instance, snatched away from life without warning, without any preparation for death, would, in his spirit form, find himself in a realm where he would find it hard to adjust himself. In other words, Watson would still be hankering after the friends and associates he had left behind him on Earth? Right, Miss Manborough. Since we know nothing of the beyond, we must make certain surmises. And, if we accept the belief that consciousness lives on for eternity, then Watson would be entirely aware of the life he had so abruptly left. Watson would be in a realm where time meant nothing. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow would all be one. Yes. And in that realm of timeless things, Watson would see that derelict bearing down on us, his friends. Who knows what agony of mind he went through, trying in desperation to reach some mind in sympathy with his, seeking some way to warn us of the danger impending. I've thought of it. Imagine that disembodied spirit somewhere out there, moaning to itself in its anguished inability to warn us. I must warn them. I must. I've tried to get their minds in tune with mine. If only I could get it sparks attention. That's an idea. To find a wireless operator, half asleep at the key, one who could tap out a warning. He'd never even know he'd done it. That's it. That's it. And so, somewhere aboard a ship, a sleepy wireless operator under the influence of Watson taps out the warning message that saved the Lure Lane and her crew. Leaving the seas, that realm of mysteries, another unsolved mystery. Thank you.